The origins of production car racing in Australia can be traced back to 1960 when the Armstrong 500 was staged at the old Phillip Island circuit. In 2012, this wonderful motor racing tradition continues with the running of the Phillip Island six hour endurance race. Which manufacturer will prevail as the chequered flag flies at the end of what will be a gruelling test of the toughest conducted over 360 minutes? There's Mitsubishi, Subaru, BMW, Mazda, Holden, Toyota, Honda and Renault all doing battle for national supremacy. Plus, you'll also see highlights of round two in the Radical Australia Cup featuring arguably the nation's fastest growing one make series. On speed, the motorsport leader, welcome to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit for one of Australian motor racing's premier events. You're going to hear a lot about this radical category from Garth and from Glenn in the ensuing laps. You can see here conditions are perfect. A little bit of cloud around, but the forecast is for fine weather. Not that that necessarily works out to be the case at Phillip Island. It is known to be several seasons in one day. A start is imminent here. You'll see highlights of this 50 minute race, the second for the weekend. Porter and Palmer on the front row. Waiting for the lights. Seconds before a start, they're gone now. Palmer, probably the best away and will charge down towards the first turn and narrow race leader we'll see if everyone gets through the first turn safely it was palmer in car number 70 to lead them and they charge through the first right hander at the end of the main straight here in phillip island one of the most what's exhilarating in the sport and look at that we've got one two three four make it cars. four cars off well that's an exciting way to start the day gents yeah there's no doubt about that it's um it's probably just a cold tire situation for a few of the guys um arriving at the first corner but uh and particularly when the cars are so even like that, everyone's trying to tussle for the same spot on the road and, and naturally at some point they've come together. Yep, we're going to have another look at that on replay. You can see in the meantime, Porter has gone to the front. We don't actually see how it began. The camera angle tends to focus more on the aftermath, really. Coates higher replay. It's just earlier in that uh, vision, you can actually see one of the cars coming across onto the guy on the inside. So it was one of those in the like three or first four cars that uh, actually look like it's come together up here's an onboard perspective Glenn as we yep. ride with Jake Shelley just yeah just a little bit further up looks like the one tried to squeeze the other and they've had a little coming together but out of all that it looks like they've come away with very little damage which is which is great to see absolutely so Porter in front now we've just been notified there is going to be a pace car scenario here from the outset. Now on board vision from the back of Gary Walker's radical Australia Melbourne entry. That's a terrific camera angle. So word coming through our communications that the pace car will slow this field down whilst they clear the debris and the cars that are stranded down towards the end of the main straight. That is nonetheless a great angle. It's, it's a great concept, this uh, category, to, to see everybody's got equal chance to win this win these races. And um, it sort of brings you back to the sort of Le Mans series that they race over in Le Mans, uh, those style of cars. And uh, they're very cost effective. And, and a lot of these guys really get a lot of enjoyment out of them. Um, probably Garth can give us a bit more of a detail on, on I suppose, technical with these cars of of what's what are the, the differences between... Um, the guy at the front and the guy at the back is it just the driver or is there just little technical things different yeah absolutely good and as you said uh, the cars are very well matched and very even and with uh, in the radical australia cup rules all the cars uh, are one control component so you have to buy all the components from radical australia um, spring rates are controlled shocks are controlled aero packages are controlled so down to tyres basically the whole car is controlled so there's nothing different between uh, the first car and last car so we're back underway now wonderful onboard shot we ride with the driver of car 55, Nicholas Stavropoulos, and that is, well, if that doesn't make ton, you want to go racing. <laughs> that's a ton tangle of that one. Yeah, no problem. We got it out. We got it out smoothly. And uh, Nicholas is running up towards the front of the pack. You can see there are four cars ahead of him during the early stages of this race. Highlights package, race two of the Radical Australia Cup. Porter leading by about six car lengths in advance of Tony Palmer. 
Gee, they're slick looking machines, aren't they? They're awesome looking cars. Look at all the gravel on the road where most of these guys have been off into this white gravel stuff on the outside and brought it all back on. So that makes it quite tricky for, um, particularly on a high speed track like this, because it can make it what we call a bit marbly. And uh, you just got to be very aware of it when you arrive at those sort of positions that, uh, that the grip is still there. Jake Shelley in car number seven started from a long way back on the grid in position number 16. The deputy.com entry. Along with Glenn Seaton, also joining us today for the call is V8 supercar driver, category manager of production car racing as well. I refer to Aaron McGill. Good to see you, mate. Hey, David. Good to be here. Thanks for your time. Looking forward to this one. It'll be a great race. It's a category of motorsport that a lot of people can relate to. And a start here is imminent. So Quinn Great on the... Great start by Quinn. Yeah, got off to an absolute flyer and has left the number seven car in its wake as they charge down towards the first turn here. And watch how this unfolds. We saw Mayhem develop with the Radicals race prior. It won't be the case this time, hopefully. But hopefully these guys have got uh, that six hours in mind that, uh, that uh, they got to do to get to the end of this race so uh, where the radicals were a much shorter race but all the evos have started um, from the front and naturally are leading this race with the bmw not too far behind and uh, it's quite a surprising the bm every everywhere they mostly go the bm sort of hangs in there until the, sort of the rear tires start to go away and uh, and then struggles a bit but um, there's a couple of young good steerers in that bm so clark quinn is the early race leader in the vip pet foods entry Second on the circuit, Stuart Costier up in the TMR Performance, Tullick Transport, Mitsubishi Lancer. And they sort themselves out during the early stages of this race. Quinn's got a good lead already. He's, uh, he's on a charge. He's, as Glenn said, it's six hours, but uh, it's a bit of a sprint race, I think, at the front. Yeah, it usually is with, uh, with the Quinns. They usually go out hard and, uh, and hope that the car hangs around, and which usually does most of the time. But, uh, but uh, they only race one way, and that's hard. Now riding on board with Leanne Tanda in the Holden Astra. A good on-board shot. And uh, that car, I think, might prove to be a surprise packet today. Looking to put in some consistent laps. And we currently look at the action for second and third with Costera. Largely ahead of the number seven car, which has been solid all weekend too. Ryan Simpson behind the wheel of that car for the first stint today and here's the BMW. The BM's starting to put a fair bit of pressure on the Polichuna car and uh, here comes uh, down the inside, great move, which is quite difficult to pull off at the end of the straight there um, because you're going such high speeds at the end there and such a daunting corner off in turn one and particularly in these sort of cars that have got very little aero on them and uh, they, get, they move around a fair bit but at the moment um, BM is starting to put the pressure on the, the, the rally art car, so it's a good job so far. Yeah, car 11, the BMW that we're watching on screen at the present time, running in Class B, BMW 335i, which has Mostert. Looking very racy. <laughs> yeah, of course, Mostert uh, spent last season running in the, the development, the V8 Supercar Development Series for the Wayne Miles East Coast Traffic Control Team out of the Gold Coast. That's right, I actually spent a bit of time with, uh, with Chaz um, in his early days because he came through karting in Queensland and was, was a national champion in karting and uh, also was involved a little bit with his first couple of rounds of the uh, development series with the Miles team and uh, he, he is a standout, that kid will, will get places and um, he's driving for uh, the FPR team now in the development series this year and um, he's, he's showing great signs. On board now with uh, Stuart Costera, the TMR performance entry. Terrific onboard shot, give you an insight into the work being done in the confines of the cockpit. 